Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena game to video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck, and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at Banned Defenders. Now there's a lot of ways you can build these high toughness decks in historic, including versions that just play Huat Lane High Alert and a bunch of high toughness creatures that don't necessarily have Defender. This deck is actually playing all creatures with the Defender ability, so they won't be able to attack unless we've got one of our enablers in play. But one of the advantages of playing all these actual Defenders is that Arcadist as a strategist becomes a very powerful draw engine. Arcadist a 4 mana 3-5 legendary Elder Dragon with Flying and Vigilance, and whenever a creature with Defender enters a battlefield under our control, we get to draw a card, and then each creature we control with Defender assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power and can attack as though it didn't have Defender. So Arcadus is by far our best enabler, but of course being a creature makes it pretty vulnerable. So to complement Arcadus, we have 4 copies of High Alert, a 3 mana enchantment, saying each creature we control assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power, and creatures we control can attack as though they didn't have Defender. So having a high alert in play alongside Arcadus isn't completely useless, because that way Arcadus will still deal 5 damage as opposed to 3, because Arcadus' ability only applies to defenders. And then we also got some exciting new additions in Jumpstart, including Wall of Blossoms as a 2 mana 0 for plant wall with defender, and when Wall of Blossoms enters the battlefield we get to draw a card. Sadly we didn't get Wall of Omens just yet, but maybe one day we will. And then Overgrown Battlements, also a nice one, 2 mana 0 for wall, with Defender and tap to add green to our mana pool for each creature with Defender we control, so that this can definitely add a ton of mana and help us empty our hand faster after we draw a bunch of cards with Wall of Blossoms and Arcadus. And our next card, Carven Karyatid, a 3 mana 2 5 spirit with Defender, and when the Karyatid enters the battlefield we get to draw a card, so we should be able to keep playing out more creatures even after a sweeper effect. So that's one of the advantages that this deck has over the high toughness decks that don't necessarily play Defenders but just play high toughness creatures alongside Assault Formation and High Alert. And we are also playing one copy of Assault Formation ourselves, as a 2 mana enchantment, saying each creature we control assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power, and for a single green target creature with Defender can attack this turn as though it didn't have Defender. So while it is a nice enabler for just 2 mana, it does require green mana for each creature with Defender we control in order to attack, so it's a lot more mana intensive than High Alert if we're attacking with multiple creatures, so that's why we only have the one copy. But it does have a nice activated ability for 2 and a green, giving creatures we control one additional toughness until end of turn, which translates into more damage. So between Assault Formation, High Alert and Arcadis we have 9 enablers for the deck, and we can't really keep a hand without at least one of them, otherwise our deck doesn't really do anything. Then taking a look at our 1-drops, we've got the full playset of Resolute Watchdog as a 1-3 defender, and for 1 mana we can sacrifice a Watchdog to give target creature we control indestructible until end of turn, so this is a nice way to protect our Arcadis, which is the creature we care about the most. We also have the full playset of Wall of Runes as a 0-4 defender that when it enters the battlefield lets us scry 1, so it gives us a bit of additional card selection to help us find the enablers in case the opponent answered one of them. And then Saruli Caretaker, an 0-3 defender that can tap an additional untapped creature we control, and then we can add 1 mana of any color to our mana pool, so this also helps us ramp and empty our hand faster. And then at 2 mana, besides our 4 copies of Wall of Blossoms and Overgrown Battlement, and the 1 of Assault Formation, we've got some additional utility cards, with our 2 copies of Tetsuko Umezawa, a 2 mana, 1-3 legendary human rogue, saying creatures we control with power or toughness 1 or less can be blocked, so this makes all of our defenders, except for the Carbon Karyatid, unblockable, so that's a great way to close out the game if the opponent has some large creatures out. And then we also have two copies of Tower Defense as an additional finisher, a two mana instant saying creatures we control get plus 0 plus 5 and gain reach until end of turn. This gives the deck some additional reach in more than one sense of the word, and also a very satisfying way to end the game. And then we've got our four copies of the Carbon Karyatid, four High Alert and four Arcadis. And then going over the mana base, we've got 23 lands, since we do also have some additional mana creatures with the Caretaker and the Battlement. So we've got 4 copies of Breeding Pool, 4 Temple Garden, and 4 Hallowed Fountain, and then some check lands with 4 Hinterland Harbor, 4 Sunpetal Grove, and 2 Glacial Fortress, and of course a single basic forest with the wall theme from Jumpstart. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a nice opening hand. 
Now, when I have double battlements and caretaker, do I hold some defenders until after we play Arcadis? I think I do still play caretaker turn one, since we'll need it to maybe make white mana to play Arcadis in the first place. But sometimes it can be correct to hold some defenders until after we play Arcadis to help us refuel. Facing a Rogarin Triome. Don't have any one drop to play with a caretaker here. And it's going to be a turn to Excavator, so opponent on an Underworld Breach deck. Tower Defense is going to be a nice way to close out the game. Second so player Arcadis, thanks to the Caretaker here. And next turn I can attack for a lot of damage. Hopefully no Teferi. It's going to be another Excavator instead, that is scary. And a Mox Amber, so they can mill for four. And a Spell Bomb mills for four again. So they're preparing the graveyard for an Underworld Breach. Alright, so... Got some options. Let's say I were to attack with everyone and our opponent takes it, they would be dead to the tower defense, but I can still play the caretaker first. Yeah, let's get in there and see what happens. Got him. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Turn two, Overgrown Battlements. Turn three, Double Ball of Blossoms. And then Arcadus to turn them into attackers. Might be up against Goblins, in which case Tetsuko is going to be pretty key. Turn to Wily Goblin. I guess we can play Carven Carried, although Carven Carried doesn't become unblockable with Tetsuko. So I might still be better off playing the Wall of Blossoms here. And then we could still draw one mana Defender. Alright. I guess I shouldn't have played my land yet because. Could have still played Wall of Runes, but I, I guess I'm happy playing it after Arcadus, so we draw an extra card. And then we're just going to try and close out the game in two attacks with Tetsuko. Opponents won't be able to play Muxus next turn yet, unless they have a Skirk Prospector in hand. Yeah, I think the plan is play Arcadus, play Wall of Runes, and then smash, opponent probably doesn't jump yet this turn. And the next turn Tetsuko can make the team unblockable. Yeah, that seems fine. And we'll scribe first, see if we can draw another creature we can play here. Another 3 drop. Alright, that's fine. Smash for 8. Opponent takes it, and now Tetsuko is lethal next turn. Alright, sweet. Managed to beat Goblins. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Reasonable hand, no one drops, but double battlements for ramp. Turn one, Secret Keeper milling themselves. So I've got a Sultai self mill deck here. Should be fun. So 
supplier. Mills, nothing too special. And Secret Keeper, Mills, and Uro, which they can maybe escape on turn four. We're just gonna play the battlements. Next turn I can play Arcadus, but I might be better off going Karyotids into another battlement to develop our mana first. Does it double Narcamoeba? So I suspect this will be a good matchup for Tetsuko if we can find it. They did put a line on top so they could escape Uro. And a caretaker to draw. So let's see here. Want to play as many defenders as possible before we tamp the battlements. So I could go Wall of Blossoms into Caretaker, take it from there. And there's Tetsuko, perfect. Could also play another battlement to have infinite mana next turn. Yeah, I guess that's fine. Opponent's gonna escape Uro, presumably. But we can go over the top. No silver smote ghouls in the graveyard to get back. We'll take two. Alrighty, so colored mana might be a constraint here. And I do need to get both Arcadus and Tetsuko in play, or I can go Arcadus and then next turn just play Tetsuko attack for lethal. Yeah, maybe that's the plan, just empty my hand here. So we can play Arcadus first. Maybe do it like this. And who doesn't love drawing cards? So we're going off. We haven't drawn another enabler yet, in case something bad happens to Arcadus, and I don't have the mana to activate Watchdog. So hopefully nothing bad happens to Arcadus. Demonic Embrace on Uro, so they can hit for 9 in the air. Discarded a Creeping Chill that was stuck in their hand. All right, we're at nine. Opponent is going to play out some blockers that don't matter once we play Tetsuko. And that does it. Sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play. This hand's missing an enabler, but we do have scry and then double draw to find one. And the mana's good, so I'll try it. Ideally, we would have been able to play Caretaker on turn one. So on turn two, we could go wall into another one drop. But uh, I'll settle for... Hmm, actually, I think I will take the battlement here. It does add a ton of mana. And we've got a lot of green cards in hand. Facing turn one Gitu Lava Runner, this should be a decent matchup. A lot of four toughness creatures that don't die to shocks and lightning strikes. Don't want them to enable spectacles, so I will block. And 
Yeah, opponent stuck on one land, so they might have kept a hand that relied a bit too much on a light of the stage to find a second land. Not a wall of blossoms. Just go carve and carry it into caretaker here. See if we can draw a painless land instead. We cannot. So we don't have a payoff yet, but we've got a bunch more card draw, a lot of mana thanks to the battlements, and our opponents not doing much in the meantime, so. This might be a wizard's lightning on the caretaker. Nope. They did find a second land at least, and a thermal alchemist joins the fray. Alright, there we go, assault formation. So I can use a battlement to essentially pay for the entire team to attack. So this taps for six. So this can attack. This can attack. And this can attack. And then I can still use my floating mana to play another carbon carrioted. Alright, this seems fine. And next turn we should be able to attack for lethal as our opponent explodes. Sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. This hand is missing an enabler, and we only have the one card draw defender with Wall of Blossoms. I do get to make a lot of mana, but without more card draw, it's not all that useful. This is better. So turn one Caretaker, turn two, I could go Wall of Blossoms plus Watchdog. So I think I have to bottom Tetsuko here. Facing turn one Chromatic Sphere, so some sort of Cathas combo deck. Turn to Excavator. Our hand's not great at the moment. Three lands and an Arcadus. Although we'll be able to play Arcadus next turn and attack for a decent amount. So is this Kethys? Not our excavator. Alright, let's play Arcadus. Don't have the mana to protect Arcadus with a watchdog, sadly. It's just gonna be an Uro for now. Mills two more excavators. I guess that's good news. What we don't want to see is Mox Ambers go to the graveyard and Cathis in case they don't have one already. Although they will be able to escape Uro next turn pretty easily. Let's see if we can find something useful. We cannot. Well, let's get in there. This time we do have the Watchdog to protect Arcadus, but our opponent probably doesn't have much removal to begin with. 
so Amory's gonna fill the graveyard some more. If their last card is Kathis or a Kathis substitute, we're probably dead. We're gonna escape Uro instead. Opponents back up to seven, and they gained a nice blocker. All right, let's see if we can draw into maybe a Tetsuko or a Tower Defense. There's Tower Defense. All right, that should just about wrap things up. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hands. Not really looking for anything specific. Next turn, I can decide between Carrotid and High Alerts against the Blue Black Secret Keeper. All right, points the mill deck. Well, if they're a mill deck with counter spells, I might want to get the High Alert in play while we can. Opponents at 12. Keeps up 3 mana. So let's start by... Hmm, maybe I should play Arcadus before attacking in case they have a way of bouncing the high alerts. Although I don't want Arcadus getting countered necessarily. But it's probably still the play. Gets countered by didn't say please. Opponent falls to eight. Right, we'll play Watchdog first in case of removal. And then we can still attack. Bounces the high alerts, hoping we didn't have more white mana. Or they might have a counter spell here. I guess like a drown in the lock would make sense. So they can still counter high alert on the way back. So do I still play high alert or do we hold it? I mean, I'm gonna have to play it at some point, right? They did have a drown in the lock. That's too bad. Alright, so now we're just digging for another enabler. Another Arcade is gone, so we're still drawing towards two Arcades, three High Alert, and one Assault Formation. Tetsuko can start chipping in. Tetsuko gets countered. I think we're happy with that. Bond looking for more counter spells. Does keep a card on top. If they have like an into the story to refuel, that would be bad. Play land first in case they have a mystical dispute. Another drown. Well, 
don't know if our opponent has more counter spells than we have enablers at this point. Thieves Guild Enforcer is going to mill us some more. Another Arcadus gone, so we're now left with no Arcadus, but three high alerts and one assault formation. Whelming wave to bounce all our stuff. But we also get to draw some additional cards here, so that's nice. Maybe should have scryed with Wall of Runes first. But if we found a high alert, I wanted to be able to play it before our opponent can draw an auto counterspell. Yeah, blue black deck is not gonna have many answers to enchantments, but the combination of Brazen Borrower into Drown in the Lock did it for them. Still 22 cards remaining, another assault formation gone. So now we're down to three copies of High Alert to win us the game. This cry from wall doesn't matter with the Thieves Guild Enforcer that's going to mill us. Maybe I should have held the wall for that very same reason. I guess I'll keep Watchdog on top because I'm happy if the opponent mills it. Alright, so we're still drawing towards three copies of High Alerts. 18 cards remaining. Small chance that Suko can get across the finish line here, but I doubt it. Tower Defense doesn't do much. I guess we can block the Brazen Borrower if that ever becomes a problem. So this is one of the downsides of uh, the Defender deck, is that you can't really do much unless you've got an Enabler in play. Another High Alert gone, so we're now down to two High Alerts. And if they have a counter spell in hand, it's going to be pretty tough. A wall to mill for four. And yeah. That's another high alert gone. So a singleton high alert is what we are hoping to draw. Assuming they don't have a counter spell. I'll take three. Another tower defense. Maybe tower defense can bait out a counter and then we can top deck high alert still. It's worth a shot. We do still have them on a 5 turn clock, but with 9 cards remaining, they might mill us first. Another Enforcer. Yeah, that's gonna speed up our uh, clock significantly. And that's the final high alert in our graveyard. 5 cards remaining. So if our opponent doesn't draw another Rogue or Mill card in four turns, we can still win. Don't want to put any more cards on the stack in case of a didn't say please. Alright, it's going to come down to the wire here. All 
Alright, Brace and Boar were flashed in. That's a rogue, so that's game over. GG's. And a Teferi Studelage, another mill engine. Alright, well, opponent made uh, mill look good. But, uh... Against an ordinary aggressive deck where all creatures actually deal damage. We would have been able to get across the finish line. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Yeah, this is a keepable hand, even if it's not too exciting. Caretakers are pretty easy to take out at only 3 toughness. But uh, tower defense can potentially represent a lot of extra damage. Turn one healer's hawk, so maybe a blue white flyer stack. The reach on tower defense could also come in handy. So we'll just play caretaker and pass. Next turn high alert can attack for six, and a turn after maybe for a lot more. Pride mates. All right, so it's the life gain deck. Well, probably still attack with both. Don't think my opponent's trading, and then we can maybe get them with double tower defense next turn. Sentinel's eyes on the hawk. Okay. And the pride mate stays on defense to hold off the caretakers. So that does make our tower defense plan a lot less exciting. But still probably worth enacting. Alright, that helps. So Tetsuko this turn, smash for 6. And next turn we should be able to attack for lethal. And we're not taking lethal on the board. Tower defense is definitely a great way to close out a game, but it is still a card with diminishing returns. If you draw too many tower defenses and not enough creatures, your tower defense doesn't do anything. So I think two copies is kind of the sweet spots. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with uh, decent opening hands. Hoping to draw another one or two mana defender so we can put this caretaker to use. Facing a Giruda deck. It's been a while since we've seen one of those. So we'll just play Watchdog and pass. And next turn we can play Arcadus. It's gonna be a turn to Gross Barrel to ramp. Yeah, we'll play Arcadus. And then next turn we can. Play some more defenders, draw some cards. We are shields down on Watchdog, but I don't expect my opponent to have too much removal. Suppose they could have shattered the sky. That's gonna be pretty tough to beat, regardless. Another Gross Barrel, so if they have a Giruda in hand, they can cast it, but they'll have to pay the three mana to put it from their sideboard into their hands. So if I can keep up Watchdog now, I should try and do so. Can I kill my opponent is a question. Let's see, 6, 16, yeah, I guess they're just dead. Well, 
I was happy to draw more cards with Arcadas in play, but tower defense tends to end the game in a hurry. So, yeah, pretty happy with how our defender deck performed. It's a nice mix of being an aggressive deck while having a few of those turns where we combo off with Overgrown Battlements and Arcadas to draw a million cards. So it's got both the aggro feel, but it also has the benefits from the ramp and control decks that get to draw a bunch of cards and make a lot of mana. So it hits the sweet spot for me of being a fun deck to play while also being reasonably competitive. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.